In the previous videos, we looked at product layout. So now let's look at process layout. First, let's look at what it is, advantages and disadvantages, and then we'll look at some methods for laying out your facility when you have a process layout. All right, so a process layout is used when you have intermittent processing. When you have more general purpose equipment, and you want to use a variable path. So remember we said that a process layout is going to be used in places like the emergency room at the hospital. And it's intermittent processing. So there's periods of time where there are areas of the emergency room that aren't needed. Right? We may not need to have anyone in surgery or in radiology. And the equipment that we have in the space is going to be more general purpose. So if you think about uh, scalpels, um, syringes, they can be used for lots of different procedures. And the idea here is that we are going to move the patient to the location based on what they need done. So this is going to be a variable path. Different uh, routes are taken for different patients depending on what they need done. And so the benefit of a process layout is we can actually provide different types of goods or in this a different service. So process layouts are typically used for services uh, because it allows for that flexibility to offer each customer or when you make a product or provide a service, it's a little different for each uh, one that you do. So process layouts definitely tend to be used for services. So when you think about um, accounting firms and how do we lay out the departments within our company, if we have a, um, a bank and financial advisory company, you know, how do you decide who you're going to put where? At the bank, where do you put uh, those who uh, will speak to you about a mortgage? Where do you put those who are um, there to help in terms of investments? Where do you put tellers? Where do you put um, your vault? So how do you lay out the space? Well, it's a variable path. Different people who come in need different parts of the bank. The benefit of a process layout is that we are less vulnerable to machine failure. So remember the problem with a product layout was because you follow a fixed path, if one machine was broken, like the soap dispenser, then the whole operation went down. You couldn't actually make any goods. Well in this case, if we're looking at the emergency room, and let's say the x-ray machine went down. Okay, so the x-ray machine is not currently working. Well we can still see patients and we can move them to where they need to be. So anyone who doesn't need an x-ray, we can continue to provide them with the service. So we don't have to fully stop all operations in the emergency room just because one piece of equipment is down. Because we have that variable path, we can actually provide uh, services that don't need the x-ray. There's also lower maintenance costs. because we don't have to shut down the entire production process when we fix equipment. So if we're fixing the x-ray machine, we can continue to operate uh, the emergency room and provide to the other needs of our patients uh, beyond that. So you don't have to shut down entire operations, which saves you money uh, when you have to do maintenance. Now the disadvantages of a process layout is it tends to be inefficient in its material handling. So think about the emergency room. Think about all the people who are in beds and chairs just waiting for um, to be seen by a doctor, for waiting for a bed to open up. There's a lot of work in process. There's high process, high work in process or high in process inventory
a lot of patients who've been partially treated. And we have to keep moving the patients around to where they need to be. So the inefficiency in the material handling is because, okay, we have to wheel the patient into triage, and then we have to wheel the patient over um, to surgery, and then we have to wheel the patient over to recovery. And so we're moving all of our work in process to the different locations. That's costly to move them around. And that also means that we have uh, partially created goods, or in this case, uh, partially um, treated patients who are sitting around and waiting for spaces to be open. Okay. And so because of this inefficiency in material handling and all this high in-process inventory, it can create some inflexibility. So while the benefit of process layout is that we can provide different services or tweak the goods to be a little bit different for each customer, because that material, the inventory starts to pile up and we have to keep moving inventory to its locations, then uh, it starts to create some, it limits uh, our ability uh, to adapt to this changing situation. Right, lots of people in beds waiting for a, like the x-ray machine or something like that. So when we look at a process layout, there are a number of ways to uh, allocate the space. Uh, the first method that we're going to look at is a block diagramming method. So in this case we have a location, we've divvied it up into workspaces, and now we need to figure out which activities or which departments are going to go into each space. We want to minimize total transportation cost or distance. If you think about an accounting firm and how much paperwork you're having to move uh, between people, that's costing the company time and money. So what you want is you want departments that talk a lot to each other or that share materials. So if you're passing on paperwork, for example, you want them to be near each other. And if there are departments that don't talk to each other and don't pass along a lot of paperwork or materials between, they can be further apart. So this is what is called block diagramming. The second method we're going to look at is a closeness rating, also called systematic layout planning. And in this case, what we do is we identify each of our activities or departments, and we specify how close they need to be to each other. Must they absolutely be next to each other? Would it just be nice if they were next to each other? Or maybe they absolutely can't be next to each other. And so we use these, these closeness ratings, to determine how we lay out our facility. The third approach, and one we're not going to look at here, is to use computer software. Uh, there is proprietary computer software uh, that will help you lay out your facility.